I'm real excited about uh, this lesson today. I like it. I don't know, you know, that that doesn't always equate into being a good lesson, but nonetheless, it's uh, one I enjoyed putting together and bringing out just a little bit more detail from last week's lesson where we spoke about the three feasts and the appointed times of God. And uh, this is bringing out some more because this lesson in Bihar and Bukatoy have some more of understanding in relation to the appointed times. And how that the appointed times and the feasts tie together historically and prophetically. And I know there are some in here who lack some understanding in regard to uh, these feasts and these appointed times. And I don't know that we could ever get all that there is. But I know we can get more than what we have. And uh, so this week's lesson, hopefully it will be helpful to you on several different levels. You know, you can... Um, you can focus up on the word in it from a historical context and always on an external basis. It's always looking at uh, looking at the word and applying it externally. And as you know, we here try to take the word of God and allow the Lord to apply it to us internally. For instance, the eighth day. The eighth day has a lot of meanings, and we're going to bring out uh, some of those meanings today. But much has been said about circumcision lately, because we have some in our group that will soon be circumcising their sons. And one of the traditions that we have is, uh, brought out, uh, scripturally by the way, scripturally based, is uh, to circumcise on the eighth day. But I, would, but I would have us look a little deeper into the meaning of the eighth day uh, being deeper than just a random day that the Lord picked out uh, or a day that maybe uh, our scientists, or those that are in the health field, have determined as a great day to do a circumcision as on that day the, there is a great deal of uh, ability of the body and the blood to uh, to co what is it coagulate. coagulate and okay all okay on that field and all that front I'm all okay on all of it but also the eighth day is the day of the Lord the eighth day stands for the Lord the eighth day stands for the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit united together the eighth day is about the new creation. It's about the resurrection. And it's not hard for me to see with for no other reason than those that, the, that is the day of the Lord. That that would be a great day to circumcise your son's heart or his flesh representing the circumcision of the, of the heart. So that's what I mean by instead of looking on the external uh, or, the, or the traditional way of looking at the Torah that we would look deeper and, and hopefully ferret out some of the meanings that uh, the Lord intended for His children to understand. So, Bihar and Bukatoy, lessons today, Le Leviticus chapter 25 through the end of the book. I think what I'll do 
today is just review this uh, drawing that I have made. And uh, it's, matter of fact, it's in the last page of your notes. Just review it so that you could possibly have a better understanding of what it is that I, what I'm about to share with you in these two lessons. And I don't know, this is out of my own mind, heart, so I don't know if it'll speak to you like it does to me, but I, I like to lay things out on paper as I, got, uh, as I get them from the Lord. So this is uh, just my drawing, uh, the way that I perceive these two uh, Sabbaths within the lesson today. That being the sabbatical year, and then the uh, eighth day, or the uh, two Sabbaths, what, I, what I'll, I'll call the two Sabbaths. So th I want to bring out the meanings of these because I believe it will really help in understanding God's salvation plan and the process that is being played out within our hearts. Now the sabbatical year, most of you understand what the sabbatical year is, right? I mean this group is as general rule is a group that has been here and if not here has also been involved in Hebraic root teaching, understanding the Torah. So I would assume that most of you, I know that most of you have a general, at least a general idea of what the seventh year or the sabbatical year was about. That was allowing the land to lay fallow and no planting and no reaping in that year, and that's called a sabbatical year. And in the sixth year, God would bless them so that the seventh year they would have, and the eighth year that they, they would have plenty until the end of the ninth year. So the sabbatical year is that seventh year, that year that followed the sixth year, that the ground laid fallow, and also there was some release of debt. So that's what I mean when I talk about the sabbatical year, and that uh, it is uh, referred to in this lesson. And then, in addition to that, we have in this lesson the year of Jubilee introduced to us. And the year of Jubilee is synonymous with the eighth day. So, together, the seventh and the eighth are synonymous and they are, not synonymous, but they are two Sabbaths. The seventh and the eighth. So this drawing that I have made is to try to lay out for you an, an understanding of the seventh and the eighth day. And how that it is laid out in the Word of God. Uh, that I didn't make any of this up. <laughs> I just simply put it in, hopefully, terms that you can comprehend or at least uh, have something to, to go back and look at and study and see if you agree. Now I did this.